Welcome Academians! Today we will create this simple tic-tac-toe game using HTML, CSS and JavaScript. I tried a new format in this video, where I don't type the whole code and I hope it will be less distractive and it will be easier to keep your attention on the explanation rather than watching me typing the code. Please leave feedback in the comment section below. Without further ado, let's get started! As you can see, we will have three files in this exercise. Let's start by filling up our index.html file. First, we will add our basic HTML5 markup, and in the head section, we will tell our HTML document to use the external style sheet from our styles.css file with the link tag, and with the script tag, we will tell the document to load and execute the code from our index.js file. In the next two lines, I will add the Google font but feel free to use any font that you like. Also, you can copy this part out from the GitHub repository and find the link down in the description below. I set the title to tic-tac-toe and we can move to fill in the body. I add the main tag with the background class. This will be the container of our game. Next, we will add the title section with the tic-tac-toe text, followed by the display section where we show our players who's next. Notice that we have a span around our X with the display player and player X classes. We will use the display player class to modify the content of this span, so changing between the users, and we will use the player X class for coloring purposes. In the next section, we will create our game grid. We will use nine divs with the title classes to form this grid in our container. In the next section, we will announce our end game state. Of course, it will be empty when the game starts and we will manipulate this from JavaScript. The last section will be responsible for our controls and we will have the reset button inside it. And that's it. This is the required markup for our game. Let's open up styles.css and make this game look beautiful. Let's start by removing the browser defined paddings and margins and set the font for the entire page using the asterisk selector. Now we set the color of the background and set its height to cover all the page and add one pixel top padding to avoid margin collapsing. With the title and display classes, we prettify our texts on the page and also give them a little spacing. By introducing the hide utility class, we will be able to hide any UI elements on the page by applying this class to the given element. The container class will create our grid system for the tic-tac-toe board. We will use CSS grid to implement this and set the grid template column and grid template row properties so we can have three equal height columns and rows. I also set a max width for it and apply auto margins to center it horizontally. For the tiles we will set border, size and font size and also we will center it with flexbox. By setting cursor pointer we give feedback for the user that this element is clickable just like an anchor tag. The player X and player O classes will be used to color different UI elements based on the player. Next we will center the control section, add a little spacing to it and give a little styling to our red reset button. Now it's time to write the heart of our game using JavaScript. So let's jump into our index.js file. First of all, I'm going to add an event listener on the window object to listen for the DOM content loaded event. This is needed because we included our JavaScript file in the head of our HTML document. And because of its position, this script will be processed before any HTML on the page. So by listening to this event, we will make sure that the HTML is processed by the browser and we can work with it. First, we are save references to all our needed HTML elements using the DOM APIs. To be precise, we will use the query selector and query selector all. Please notice that for the tiles, we are wrapping this around with the array.from function because the query selector all function returns a node list, which is an array-like object by converting it to a proper array, we have all the tools that we have for array. At the bottom I already added a click handler to the reset button, but we will implement that later. Let's create the variables 
that we will need for our game. We will create an array with nine empty strings and this will act for the board for us. We will store the current player, which can be X or O, and we will store whether if we have an end game result or the game is still active. In the is game active variable, I'll add three constant string values and each of them represents an end game state and we will use this to announce our end game state. Next, we will collect and store all our winning condition states in the winning conditions constant. Please notice that this is an array of arrays and we store different indexes in it. I know it's pretty hard to understand at first, but please look at the comment I placed above. It visually represents our tic-tac-toe board as we see it on a UI and in every tile I wrote the index that will represent the specific tile on the UI. So please notice that the first winning condition, 0, 1 and 2, will be the first horizontal line of the tic-tac-toe board. Now we will go through our tiles array and attach an event listener to every single tile in it. So now when we click on a tile, a user action function will be called with the reference to that specific tile and the index of it. We will use the tile reference to modify our UI and we will use the index to update our in-memory saved board array. Now it's time to implement the user action function. It will represent a turn in the game. This function will be called when the user clicks on a tile. First we will check if the step is a valid action by passing the tile to the isValidAction function. We will implement this later and we will check whether is our game active or not. So basically whether it has an end game state or a winner or a tie basically or not. If both conditions are true, so we have a valid action and the game is active, then we will set the inner text to the current player, which will be X or O, and we will assign the player X or player O class based on the current player. Note that we are not using a conditional here. We are using template string literals. So the current player inside the curly brackets will be X or O, depending on the current player's value. After that, we will call the update board and update our board array. Then we will check whether we have a winner or not in the handler resolve validation function. And after that, we will call the change player method. Let's implement that function now. First, we will remove the class list of the current player. Then we will change our current player to be X if it was O or O if it was X and update the player display to display the current player with the appropriate class. Next, we will implement a helper function called announce, which will help to announce our winner or end game state to the users. It receives an end game state string called type and based on that, we will modify the announcers in the HTML. Lastly, we will remove the hide class to show the announcer to the user. Now it's time to implement the handle result validation function. We will check if we have a winner or not by looping through our win conditions array. And for every subarray, which all contains three numbers, we will check if the array has the same characters for these indexes. If any of the three elements is an empty string, so basically an empty tile, we will skip that iteration using the continue keyword. If they are equal, then we set the round one variable to true and exit our for loop using the break keyword. If we have a winner, we will use our announce function and call it with player x1 or player o1 based on the current player's value and we will set the is game active to false. If we don't have a winner and our board doesn't have any empty strings left, then we won't have any winners, so we announce a tie. Now we write the update board function. It sets the value of the element in the board array at the given position to be equal to the value of the current player variable. Now we write the isValidAction function. It basically checks whether the tile has a value already, and if it has, it returns false, otherwise it returns true. We use this function to make sure that players only play empty tiles in their turns. Lastly, we will implement our reset board function, which will reset the game state and the board. 
First we will set the board to contain 9 empty strings, then we will set the isGameActive variable to true, and hide the announcer by adding the height class. By definition, player x starts the game every time, so if the current player is O, then we call the change player function. Lastly, we will update our UI, and for every tile, we will set the inner text to be an empty string, and remove any player-related classes. And that's it! You have a working tic-tac-toe game using HTML, CSS and JavaScript. If you have any ideas, feedback or question, don't hesitate and write it down in the comment section below. I see you guys in the next video.